and today we are standing at the supercharger at Aimness. I have a non-Tesla and we are going to charge a non-Tesla at the Tesla supercharger. So let's go. So we said we are going to charge the non-Tesla, in this case the Volkswagen ID4, at the Tesla supercharger. But before you can do that, you need to do some uh, essential things. And that is downloading, downloading the Tesla app, registering for an account. And if you did that, like I'm showing it right now, you are able to st start the charge session. But before that, you need still to add new stuff to your account. Uh, let me show you. If you start the app, this is how you are getting greeted. A first icon of charge your non-Tesla, very big. And then if you scroll down, you can see the different kind of cars Tesla is offering. And of course you can buy it through the app. And uh, as last, the Tesla shop where you can buy Tesla, SSRs and funny things. Uh, but before you can charge your non-Tesla, you need to add your billing address and a payment option. I'm going to show you which are the options uh, in payment ways because uh, contact information is not interesting but under charging and under manage payment you can add a credit card and a SIPA. A credit card, everybody knows what a credit card is and a SIPA is just a bank transfer you allow your bank to for you, uh, you allow Tesla to trans uh, ask money for the transaction you made. But I added my bank account with SIPA and Hopefully it will work. It's connected, so let's see. That's it, basically. Uh, last one, there's membership of Tesla, which costs for uh, non-Tesla users 12 euro and 99 cents per month. For a Tesla user, this is free. What it says, what, what, what do you get with the membership is simple. You get for a, for a month subscription, you get a lower uh, price per kilowatt hour. In this case, with this charger here, uh, I may see it if I go back and if you press on charge your non-Tesla and I am at location uh, Narda, right here. If I press on it, it will say it costs, costs me normally 57 cents per kilowatt hour, but if I get a membership, it will cost me 24 cents to charge here. Uh, these, these pricing prices are not fixed uh, for all the Tesla chargings. It's different per Tesla supercharger location. So uh, let me just look around. Uh, just a bit further at Aimness, it will cost me still 24 uh, cents per kilowatt hour, but at Breukelen here down, it will cost me 26 kilowatt hour with the membership. And without, it cost me 59. Uh, do we have something more in the neighborhood? Yeah, I know we do, but it just shows the three closest one currently on the app. Before we start, I'm going to enable the membership because you break even around 40 kilowatt hour charging. So uh, if you charge more than 40 kilowatt hour in a month, you earn that 13 euros in a month back and you will charge cheaper for a longer period of time. So it's actually nonsense to not pay for the membership, even if you want to charge for one time in, or two times in a month. You, it will be cheaper for you. Uh, in my case, with the ID4 with 77 kilowatt hour, I just need to charge once from uh, 10 to 70% and I, I, I am already break even with the monthly payment subscription. Let's see if we can charge at all. Uh, and before we do that, let's enable the Membership, no, account, charging, membership, get started. Uh, but I did add the membership. Select the me uh, member payment. Select the payment method, yes, yes. Okay, why is it not working? Yes. Go back, start. It's just not working. Let's try again. And finally, you can start your membership. Uh, let's start the membership. Hopefully it will work. Good. 
Uh, active your monthly billing will start on December 3rd of month. Let me see if I can cancel it. On 3rd of month. Okay. Done. Now we have one month of Tesla supercharging with a non-Tesla. Um, so, let's charge. I'm ready. And we will start this session again. I am not able to supercharge. Hmm. I will start the app again and we'll see if we can uh, get the non-Tesla charging working. Let's go. So, our destination is at the front. Let's park and let's charge the car. And let's see how close we need to go to the uh, charger. And for the Tesla warriors behind the keyboard, yes, I will need two charging spots to charge one car. Sorry, between the lines and how close we need to go. Um, I've lit, I, need, I think I need to be proper close to the charger. This should do it. I hope so. Let's go and let's try the charging. Here we are at the outside. And first impression, of course, we will take this charger, which normally will be for the Tesla right here. But we will claim this one and park here. So we will need to claim two chargers. Let's do this. First impression, the cable is really proper short, really short, but let's see if we can reach it at all. No, we can handle it there. And for the info, I, am, I could go backwards a bit more, but I'm already pretty close to the end. So we take the charger and actually it's right here. And I need both of my hands to do this. And let's see. Wait. Let's see. I need two hands. Now it's in. I take my phone right here. And what you will see basically is I press charge on Tesla. It will say I'm close to a charger. So let's see. I am here. And then uh, my membership pricing is activated. And I need to see on which stall I am. Let me show you. I'm at stall 11 point B. So we look for 11 point B right there. And then it's basically press start. It's starting. You heard that you hear the click on the charger and let's see if we now the high battery high voltage battery is disengaged and it's charging do we see something in the application not really oh there it is nice we are currently charging with 63 and that is normal because currently I have a battery left of 40 or 54 percent which is normal in an, another video I will uh, look for a difference between the V2 which is this one is and uh, the V3 uh, version 3 chargers and see if there's any difference in speed power etc with the ID4 to be honest this charger is capable of 150 kilowatt charging the v V3 is capable of 250 kilowatt charging and this car is capable of 125 so it shouldn't be any issue and it shouldn't have any difference in speed and charge power but for now it's working as intended and basically that's it and it's pretty straight forward only of course it's a thing 
I am using one extra charger. And that's not great. Not great for the Tesla users. But personally, there is a simple fix for this. So if Elon Musk is listening, create three, four dedicated chargers with a long cable and reserve them for the non-EVs or non-Teslas, sorry. And if the Tesla charger station is full, release the non-Tesla chargers also for the uh, usage for Teslas and accept the fact that it's full for the non-Teslas then. So, it is pretty straightforward and it's working, so. So we are charging for a few minutes now at the Tesla supercharger in Naarden. And this is a pretty conventional standard charging uh, setup of uh, Tesla superchargers. But these days you will also see some uh, supercharger locations with uh, the charger at the middle of the parking lot. And look at me, it's right there. I'm gonna show you what the future could be with supercharging with a Tesla location, Tesla supercharging location. And this could be the past and that the future. So let me show you what it could bring with uh, yeah, easier parking with a shorter cable. Because the only reason this is irritating when you want to charge a non-Tesla is the length of the cable. Because a no normal Tesla at the other side of the car, the charge location is here and it's almost 40 centimeters, 40, 50 centimeters even more inside of the car. It's, uh, it's at my wheel arch, or at least center, center of my wheel. So let me end this charge session. I think it's pretty forward with uh, stopping the charging. Now, let me show you, stop charge right there. Yippee, it's done. Eight kilowatt hour, almost two, hour, oh, two euros. Great, now we stop. You put it back and you are done. I'm not done. Because for now we are done with this charger. And I'm gonna park it right there. And see how easy it is actually to charge a non-Tesla. Uh, what we do, actually, we park on the other side. Normally you should park here, but I'm parking it here. Open your charge port and take the CCS. So open it up and then charge your non-Tesla. We are at Narden again, uh, not Amnes, so main Narden. And then we walk to the charger, look around, and we are at 5B. Now scroll to 5B. Also, it's starting at 10, 11, 12, 30, 14, and it starts at 1. Hmm. Anyway, 5B, start, start charging. And we have a lift off. It's working. Great piece of machinery. And yeah, you can't really see it from the outside. You have no tag, you have no uh, NFC tag. You can't use uh, different applications. You just need the Tesla app to charge at the supercharging. And that's it. But if you're looking right now, did I use a uh, one spot or two spots? 
I think it's one, right? This should be the future of the Tesla chargers. And if you're looking at it this way, this is fine. This is perfectly fine. You can have a Tesla on the left, you can have a non-Tesla on the right. So if you're done with the charging session, it's time to stop. You press stop starting, uh, stop charging. You walk back to your car. Uh, I had initially the issue that my pins, connecting pins didn't connect, so I needed to hold my charging port a bit longer, but that's the end. You take the charger, put it back, it clicks, done. And if you close your charging port, you take your phone and then go back, you scroll down, you press model Y and then set up your phone, uh, set up your uh, car. Uh, let's say model Y are good, great. I wanted blue. I wanted 20 inch. Uh, summer uh, winter tires. Ah, I wanted tow hatch, but I will buy it after. Fine, good, great. And enhanced pilot, yes. And then you see the price of 72,000. Damn, never mind. I will keep my ID for. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. This was the charging of a non Tesla at the Tesla supercharger location of Narden. And uh, it's time to say goodbye. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again. Later!